Welcome to another video. Fuel pump relays, a very important issue and a very important component. It makes the engine go. Over here in the schematic, and this is a schematic a demonstration for all makes and models, even though it's a textbook. If you understand this, you'll understand everything. Over here we have a computer controlling this. Over here we have the 12 volts going to oil pressure switch. Over here we have the relay going to the fuel pump, which is the load. Now, 12 volts, we have current flowing through here, through here, through here, through the physical ground, through here. Once that happens, this is activated. This goes from this position to this position. So now, follow the dotted lines. Now, current can flow. See the junction 12 volts from here, from here, from here. Now, this is closed to here, to our friend, the fuel pump, who needs it. He'll get 12 volts. See the 12 volts? Through all these connectors. The fact that I measure 12 volts at this point tells me that this is working. The fact that this is working tells me the computer gave me the 12 volts. The fact that the computer gave me 12 volts tells me it got 12 volts from, you guessed it, this one. The fact that he got 12 volts tells me there's no short from here or here. The ground. Because this would blow. That tells me a lot. The fact that I put 12 volts over here, I put my meter here, my meter, my probe, that tells me everything is working. Now, watch the oil pressure switch over here. Oil pressure switch, when you have the correct oil pressure, right, 30 PSI, whatever it is, it should not go below maybe 5 PSI. It depends on the, on the making the model. They close and they allow, they allow oil pressure to be, the switch to be closed. The computer says, okay, the, the, com the computer says it's, it's, it's closed. Now I can start the fuel pump going. I, I can start the relay and I can start the fuel pump as long as he's good. So there's a little hesitation sometimes when you crank, oil, it waits for the oil pressure. It says, okay, oil pressure is good. Let's get the relay. The computer says, okay, fine. I get my okay. I'm going to give you my okay now because I got, I got the oil pressure. I got oil pressure. It's safe to do it. Now I'll start the, the fuel pump. This is a bypass. It, what happens if this doesn't work? Like, remember on Toyotas this year, there was a recall with fuel pump problems. There was a huge recall. If this doesn't work, guess what? There's a path for, if this, as long as this is closed, for the path for the current to go to the fuel pump. So the fuel pump will be connected through this to 12 volts through this. It's a bypass. Okay? As long as the oil pressure is correct, even though he failed his job, Oil pressure is great. It could go through here. It's a bypass. Okay? Hope you understand that. If you understand this, no problem. You'll understand anything that I, any schematic that I throw out there. Okay? Now going through a little different issue. A little different issue. When I showed you the meter, remember I showed you the meter that I used before. And you can see a meter that I used, uh, the, a video is going to come out. How, again, how to do the battery test. Very, very important. There's a huge search for batteries, uh, for fuel pump. That's why I'm going over these things. There's a big search. So anyway, as you can see over here, 100 milliseconds. It has to be 100 milliseconds to catch a pulse. The other one that I used told in the other one was a uh, 287. This is 83. This is a little uh, um, less upgraded. Minimum, maximum. Over here, it's a little different because they're not going to show you all at one time. But the video that I will upload later on, you'll see, like you've seen before, all the minimum max is right in front of you displayed. This one, you have to hit the button a little. So you're recording, right? Minimum. Right now, it's on minimum. Right now, it's on average. Right now, it's on record. Right now, it's on maximum. So you have to go... Press the button a little, but not too bad. The other one, you just do it, and it's, you, show, you see all the displays. The main idea is when you crank that battery, you don't want it to fall, the voltage to fall too low, below 9.6. These meters will catch it. Because if you, know, like I had, I had no ability to crank, right? You always get a remote, uh, a remote start and all that, but you crank it, you leave the meter there. Right? You could videotape it, whatever you want. You don't have to because you have, the, you have it over there, the, the readings, the measurements. Then you go back, you see the measurements, 
how much, how low it went to. And that one it went to the 10.6, which is acceptable. That's the best to me. That's the best tech, the best way of looking at it. Better than the low test. The low test is 100 amps. This is all the amps that it needs. 300 amps, depending obviously on on, on the V6, V8, and all that depends obviously. But that's a true test to me. So anyway, again, maximum you'll see it. Okay, this is a little different, but go to those videos with with, with the battery, and and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll upload, I'll upload later. You'll understand a little better then. Again, there could be corrosion on the terminals. The best thing is to try to crank. I didn't have anybody to crank. Measure the voltage across those terminals. Make sure. But what I did was I cleaned off the terminals before, so I knew it was clean. Obviously, that's a good vehicle. On a bad vehicle, obviously you might have ten and a half volts. Now, 10 and a half volts, remember, or 10 volts, whatever it is. Of course, there could be a voltage drop across the terminal or the wires. You could be losing it. You have to, you have to, you have to ask yourself, is the battery really bad? The first thing that you always try to do is try to boost it, try to recharge it. That's the first thing you try to do. Once you do that, once you try to do that, then you could take some measurements. Now, you have to ask yourself, is it the battery? Or you know what? Maybe somebody drove it. They didn't tell me. The alternator just crapped out or the belt broke, right? Which you can see, obviously, right? Sometimes, right? Depending. And you can see. as, And then that's why it wasn't able to charge. Or maybe the person drove it before me. They cranked it. There was a crank, but no start. You know, when you have no fuel pressure or spark, you crank and you crank and you crank. You know what happens when you crank? You discharge the battery. So maybe because of those reasons, it is low on battery. Not because the battery itself. Always remember the corrosion, the wires. If I cannot make contact, like I showed you in the video, when I put my voltmeter across the the cables, the, the, the contacts, the terminals of the battery, and I cannot make contact with my probes to get a reading, a, a good reading like this, you know what? Then to me, there's rust over there, there's corrosion over there. I have to get a reading. If not, good luck taking a, making a boost. Especially those on the side terminals, like I said to you, they get rusted all the time. I can't even put a voltmeter on it, forget about putting a boost on it. So just change those side terminals, like I said before. Coming now to a better subject, I guess. Going over this, I want to just go over this quickly. Horsepower, on a different note, I guess. The terminology horsepower where does it originate from we use it obviously to specify obviously the power of the engine years and years ago and before people click off i you know to watch whatever uh, they want to watch whatever it is try to make it interesting as i can how do we get terminology of of horsepower well guess how many years ago they ha only had horses to do the work remember horses you pulled carriages right in the 1800s right on the farm so they used to do the work how do we dictate what what's called the horsepower well this is the formula believe it or not this is the weight as you can see this poor horse who looks tired is dragging this weight about 165 feet from here to here he's dragging it this weight to pick it up 200 pound weight right it's like he's going to the gym working out so now, now, when he's doing that, he's exerting or creating horsepower, they call it. Power from the horse. In order, to, how much is 200 pounds? Can you, how, how much of a distance, 165 feet, to pick up a 200 pound weight from this, at this height over here? That's how you come out horsepower. That's where the formula originates. All this horsepower, length and feet. This is how you would derive that horsepower. At over here, as you can see, the two, foot pounds. So, I have to understand one thing. There's net horsepower. There is gross horsepower. There's uh, um, there's also something called road horsepower, which is the horsepower at the wheels. Remember, you lose horsepower. You lose power through the powertrain, through the transmission, from the crankshaft. So you lose power through it. Gross horsepower is with 
everything but the, but the engine. The engine strip. That's why they do a, a dyno uh, um, before an inspection years ago. Now they do it obviously differently. So I just want you to understand where horsepower comes from. The more horses you have, the easier it is to pull the weight or the load, right? But this horse, we want this horse to pull it, right? We want this horse to pull it as easy as possible and as quick as possible, just like the car. So anyway, now let's go to something that I think says it all and hopefully this will, this will be a good indicator. Always I talk about computers. This will be the easiest one because these diagrams speak better than I can explain things, believe me. So these are easy to understand. Remember sensors, somebody always asked me, how do I know the sensors are inputs or outputs? Anything that gives data information to the computer is an input. See, the, the arrow's going in, it's going in to the input. Everything that's going out, the arrow's going out, are outputs. What's an example? A fuel injector, an actuator, a motor, a fuel pump. So 12 volts to the ECM, this is through a fuel injector, and this is to the fuel pump. What, does, what this does is, based on these information, this data, engine speed, uh, position, air, fuel, temperature of air, all these things we've been talking about, it makes a decision. It makes the decision when to open the fuel injector by giving it a ground, a ground. Now, we don't toggle B+, plus. we toggle ground. B+, plus will make too much noise, introduce too much noise. We toggle ground, remember that. Therefore, ground will go on and off. On and, it's like a switch. I'm holding a switch on and off, on and off, on and off. Except there are drivers in here. Anyway, not too important point. But anyway, he makes a decision how long to keep the, the fuel injectors open and how long to close them. And it all depends on these uh, sensors. And then we get the fuel pump to give fuel pressure, obviously. And then obviously we get what we need. So you get the fuel pressure, then you get the fuel injectors, right? Then you get the fuel injector to give the fuel. Because first we need fuel pressure. So anyway, anyway, I hope this was helpful. Please go to my videos about how to check batteries, how to check uh, alternators, please. I, have, I, I did a few of them. I just started. I'm gonna do much, much more hands-on. Um, it's gonna be about how to check fuses, uh, all these things and a parasitic draw if you if you come to your car in the morning and your car battery is low you put the lights on you can't even low you put a clamp meter buy a clamp meter measure the current measure the current if there is a draw obviously you lost it because of the draw now these are computerized cars these are not cars from years ago we used to pull out the fuses pull out the fuses i disagree with that method at all Entirely, I disagree with that. Not for today's vehicles. Not when you have an ECM, a PCM, an LCM. You have many, many modules going to one fuse. If I go to one fuse and I have five modules, let's say I have these are sensors. Let's say these are modules, right? And I, this is a fuse. I take out this fuse, right? I have a lot of current going here, right? I took out this ECM. I just pulled it out. Oh, look at that. The current just went down. It was two amps. It just went down to zero. What's the problem? Oh, this is the problem. Really? What about all these? What about all these modules? How can you tell which one of these are? Number one, you're going to awake the other modules anyway by doing that. It's like taking the power out off the, the battery. You're taking out the fuse. Aren't you disconnecting the power? To me, it doesn't make sense, the whole method. Years ago, yeah, you used to do things 25 years ago, not for these computerized cars. And when you do that, the, you, you reset it, what's going to happen later on? The, 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 what's going to happen to the current? It'll normalize, and then how are you going to find out which of these five or six objects is the one? If you want to do it, measure voltage at millivolts. If you see a high one, take out this one. It'll be longer, but hey, take out maybe this one, take out this module, a connector, maybe take out this connector. This, but when you look at the schematic, go to the power distribution you should figure out which one which advice a device might take a, or draw about two amps maybe the radio the first thing is the radio when you have a draw 
If somebody did the work on your radio, your speakers, your amplifiers, somebody put in cameras, a security system, that should be the first thing that should go into your, in, 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 into your mind. Because that's what messes up all the time the battery, and that's why you have a draw. Remember, you first you ask yourself, was anything installed? Oh, any, uh, uh, any cameras, radios, obviously, alarm systems, anything was installed, that might be the drain right there. That's the first thing that should come to your mind when you see these things. Of course, if the lights were on, if you're going to tell me, oh, that's no problem, I'll get a boost, right? I'll get a boost. When I go, when, when I go, when, when I put the boost, the, the car will start, and then I can tell that the lights were on, because I'll see that the lights were on, which caused it to, to have a drain. What about if the switch, if the switch was bad or, or not bad? How do you know? How do you know? Maybe the switch is bad and, 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 and it caused the lights to go on. It's not that easy just to go and say, okay, there were the lights were the problem. Yeah. Now you have to trace it which one, which of the switches. Remember, body control modules controls the lights. How many schematics have I gone through? Body control module controls the lights, the power lock doors, sometimes wipers, sometimes everything. So just because it's a, it could be a relay, it could be the body control module. Modules take about, can take about two amps low current but high amps you could have obviously a, a bulb go out whatever it is a bulb and all that lights but what made the lights go on the body control module remember that so anyway please go to my videos like i said i need about um 900 more hours and if you if you learn something from this and if you acquire knowledge if anything from the hands-on Please subscribe, but the, like the please hit that bell, okay? Like round one, so you know when I make uh, more videos. Thanks for watching, then.